uh, remember those awkward preteen and teen years? Speaking about mental yes. health, <laughs> um, you're scrambling to figure out, are you in the in crowd? How do you navigate the whole popularity thing? All at the same time that your body is changing. Awful. Turns out that what happened then, and your popularity then may follow you into your adult lives. At least that's the argument made in this new book that caught our eye. It's called Popularity, The Power of Likeability in a Status-Obsessed World. And it rings especially true if, like me, you have a high school reunion this summer or any time coming up. Why is it that some of those old insecurities from high school bubble back up again so easily, even decades later? And why do so many of us feel the urge to chase popularity as a thing, even as adults? Well, Joshua Megayanis is a local therapist, and he's here to break this down for us. This is such an interesting topic, so thank you for doing this. Of course, thank you for having me. So we want to start with what it is about that age, going back to what this book is saying which is it kind of starts when we're preteens and teens. What makes us value popularity to begin with? Well, I think ego comes into play, right? Um, we're all about self and we're all about wanting to connect and, and be accepted by people. And, and the minute we start watching television and seeing what's exciting or, or what we should be, that's where we start to gravitate towards. So, I mean, I can think of when I was in junior high thinking, oh, okay, if I'm a baseball player, I've got to look like this person and play like them so I could be in. Um, and so from early on, we, we were trying to get in. We want to be in the best club. We want to be on the best team, not just a team, the best team. Um, and, and we want to uh, be in the class that everybody has fun in. You know, and so it's about acceptance. Mm -hmm. We were talking uh, in, during the break about what, what we consider popularity. Like, yeah. I had a lot of friends, but I wasn't popular. <laughs> <laughs> so are there different kinds of popularity, and does that matter, and does that influence how we sort of see it today, do you think? Yeah. I, you know, I think it does. I, I, when I was in high school, I was, um, I've heard the word floater or, or, yes. or people, you know, kind of are in different crowds. And that's how I was. Um, but there are popularity um, circles or, or areas that uh, you've got you know, the thespians. So the, 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 dr the drama folks who, um, oh, they're the best actor. And so everybody knows them. So within each clique, there is that person who stands out, who's a little bit more gregarious and willing to kind of take the lead or, or step out, if you will. Um, and, and I think it does follow us throughout, you know, and when we think about our adult lives, who we were then, we're not too far off of who we are now. Um, so if you were that person who talked a lot or who was able to, um, sometimes I'll say, talk to the devil, right, if he's here, um, you know, you'll do that in your work life as well. I mean, that's, those are the CEOs, those are the folks who are leading, communication folks, um, and or entrepreneurs, right? They're, they're wanting to do their own thing still. What about the insecurities associated with that that follow us into adulthood? Because I even, you know, I'm a couple decades away from high school and I still find myself, I'll enter a room and my brain goes immediately to how insecure I felt the first day of seventh grade. And I think it's been long enough. And even your parents tell you growing up, like everybody moves on from high school and this isn't the best year of your life. Things get better, but then we go back. Right. We do, we do kind of revert back because it's, it's what our behavior or what we know or remember. Mm -hmm. You know, when we're developing at that time um, in, in our brains, um, we're, we're developing so fastly and we're taking everything in that that's what we remember most. So by the time we're 24, when the brain fully develops, right, then we kind of take a, a stop or a slow down. And, and when we do go back, I just went back to my 20 year in October and thought, oh, wow, you know, <laughs> what am I going to do? Who am I? I'm not yes. partnered. I'm, I'm single and I've got to go back and I've got to educate who Josh is all over again. That's how I felt when and, I went to mine. Yeah. And it's, and, and so those insecurities do come back because we revert back to that person. Of, well, I don't want to share everything about me right now. Yeah. You know, and I want there to be some sort of boundary or some sort of distance between myself and, and you all. Okay, so we only have a couple of seconds left. Okay. Do you have any advice if you do find yourself reverting back to seventh grade first day? <laughs> yeah, Please. yeah, I do. Um, you know, tell them something funny. I'm the inventor of post-its. Or, <laughs> um, you know, find that friend that you had and, and try and connect that way. Find a familiar uh, items or familiar people from your past that made you feel good. Um, and remind yourself, too, that it was your experience and their experience was very different as well. I like that better. advice. <laughs> <laughs> Therapist Joshua Megayanis, thank you so much. Thank you. You can follow more of his work and learn more about him at joshuatherapy.com. We're actually talking about this over on Facebook. Tyler, what are people yeah. saying? Yeah, Pamela makes a great point. She says, I wasn't concerned about being popular or not. I just wanted to get along with everyone that I knew. So head to our Facebook page, weigh in on the conversation. We'll read some more of those comments. Awesome.